What's up, Summoners? King Blair here. Today, for Top 5 Saturday, since I missed this past week's Top 5 Tuesday, we're going to be doing the Top 5 Biggest, Most Impactful Buffs that we've had in Epic 7. And we've had a lot of buffs over the years, right? It's been, this game's up for almost been three years now. We're really close to the third anniversary. And there has been several buffs. So I wanted to talk about the Top 5 that I think had the biggest impact in the game and continue to be relevant to this day. So, if you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and join the Discord server, link down in the description. But without further ado, let's get right into it, the top five biggest buffs. So, the idea for this video actually came because we have the balance patch being announced tomorrow, which is very, very soon. And we also just recently had a patch that buffed two units that are kind of dominating the meta. So I will not be including them in this top 5 because I feel like everyone kind of knows that they're OP. But I will still include them in the honorable mention so you guys know why we're doing this video and so you guys get an example as well as including an actual honorable mention. So first, we have none other than Researcher. Carrot, this unit is stomping the meta right now. She would be number 1, but again, she doesn't have that long lifespan yet. I don't want to make statements or judgment on a unit that's been out for less than 2 months, right? While she may have insane dominance now, we don't know all the units that we're going to be getting if she's not going to fall out of meta, right? So because the chance there is that she can fall out, I will not include her on this list, but she's incredibly powerful. I mean, if you don't already have a carrot, build your carrot. She's insanely strong, right? The S3 being able to burn, to strip, her having more passes than any other unit in this game, super overloaded kid, and very few counters makes it an amazing unit to have. And of course, the other unit that recently got a buff, that is also very, very strong, and I don't know how strong it will be, again, because it's only been for a little bit, but I do expect it to stay strong. It's going to be made Chloe. That cleanse is crazy strong, super annoying. The fact that she heals two allies now on this S2 versus just one, and that the healing has gone up, has made her so she just helps tank teams so much, as well as aggro teams, because cleansing and putting attack buff, that's all you could ever want. That basically makes it so unless you, they kill your DPS or they kill your May Chloe, you are getting out a full combo with some really good supports that are, some really good DPSs that are out there. So again, I will not be including them in the top five, but I thought I should touch them in the honorable mention. And last, but definitely not least, another unit I wanted to put in this honorable mention is actually going to be none other than Fire Ravi. She did get a massive buff. She used to not have the stun on the S1. She used to not have an EE at all. The only reason I didn't include her higher, and she was she became incredibly strong after the buffs, right? And they also did damage buffs before. She just did a lot of buffs. She just did like four, almost four buffs at this point, right? She used to not have effectiveness on this S2. It used to just be attack. It used to scale slower, right? So no stun on the S1. This used to require more fury, so it made it harder to actually use it, and her stat gains were not as big, right? It was a completely different unit, and she became a pretty big dominant force after all the buffs. The only thing is she kind of cheats a little bit, because none of the other units on this list actually got an EE. They only got buffs, so that's why I didn't include her, because she kind of cheated a little bit, and she's kind of starting to fall off. So she only had a really good meta for a little bit, but has definitely started to fall off from before. But... With the honorable mentions out of the way, let's get to the actual top five. If you disagree with the list, make sure to comment down below who you think I missed, right? It's always nice to know what you guys think. But let's start with number five. We have none other than Cerise. That's right, we are starting straight with Cerise. This unit was never actually a bad unit. Uh, even on her release, she was okay, right? She wasn't an incredibly strong unit. She wasn't unplayable, but she never was, like, really strong. So... With the update, they made her strong in almost every situation and a staple to cleave teams. So what do they buff about her? Why do we see her so much? Why is she in every single defense? Why is she so popular? So if you didn't know, this S3 before, it still used to have the chance to strip. It still had the chance to decrease speed. still had the chance to uh, restrict. And still had the chance to put Invincible up. Right? It still had all of this. What it didn't have, though, was the attack using an advantageous element. Why is this important? Because before, you could stack Earth and you would lose because of your cleave, right? You couldn't do Challenger Dami cleave with Cerise 
if they had an earth unit because you had a chance to miss. So this extra line made a huge deal for cleave teams because it made it so you had a reliable way, oh, a reliable way to put these two debuffs on the enemy, right? That was really, really nice. That made it so you could actually hit these two debuffs and you were guaranteed to crit, which allowed you to get a guaranteed seed on push, which is one of the reasons she's so strong right now. The other thing is the S2. It, they added, it always had the stun, but they added the unable to be buffed. Why is that important? Again, there was a A Tywin was really popular when she got the buff and she, he'd be able to cleanse it. Now with this, you could still stun A Tywin. You could still also hit Kron extremely hard. She already kind of countered Kron, but this was just the icing on the cake, right? Because you could just apply unable to be buffed and not even have to worry about Kron at all, right? You could kill him before he even got to get cleansed, right? By someone else. So this skill, really, really good. Again, then able to be buffed. Comes a long way, lets you set up, be more annoying. And then last but definitely not least. You get a dual attack on your S1 when your S3 is on cooldown. This one was also huge because it made her good for Brewster teams and it just added to the power that she had in Cleave teams because now instead of just being a niche unit for Cleave and for control that could apply Restrict and stop cleaving because of her higher base speed against Faithless Lytica, who at the time was extremely popular. She had considerably higher base speed than Death Lytica, which is why she was used and you could restrict the enemy, but could sometimes miss on Earth units. Well, now that didn't matter because now you can hit them. You can apply Unable to be buffed for Brewster teams, and the dual attack allows you to follow up with your cleave or with your Brewster team, allowing you to set up some really cool combos. So again, very big buffs, and it continues to be she continues to be a meta unit, right? It's been out for a, quite a while, over four months at this point, and she still is a very important part of the meta and an important core to most cleave teams, and a really good unit for just Brewster control, right? Very, very solid units. Now, at the number four, we have someone that you may have forgotten if you didn't play at the time that actually got buffed. But after this buff, the game has never been the same. And that is going to be none other than Basar. This unit used to be kind of garbage, right? No one gave Basar even two looks. People would look at Basar and were like, eh, not that good of a unit. Why? What changed? It was such a small but significant change, right? I don't know the exact details of everything. Sadly, I, I can't read back, back all the patches before. I wish there was a way to compile this information. I wasn't going off on the top of my head from what I remember. But the biggest one was going to be to his S3. I don't know if they changed much about his S2 besides taking out the Soul Burn that used to be here and moving it to here, right? His Soul Burn used to be here and used to not do that much. But now the Soul Burn was here. Before, this skill used to strip, right? It was still an AoE strip. But you guys know what know what it didn't have? It didn't have the unable to be buffed, and it didn't have the ignore effect resistance. Those two things were enough. I don't even think it had the CR push. There was the CR push back, to be completely honest. But again, that's something that I'm not 100 percent sure on. But the unable to be buffed and the ignore effect resistance. These two things have led to a dominance of Basar of him always being a meta unit for the past years. That's how long he's been around. He was a staple in arena defense. He was a staple when Are uh, RTA first came out. He's a staple now as one of the best aggressive units and ways to deal with teams. Why? This ignore effect resistance. And he was one of the first that actually got this. He kind of paved the way for the ignore effect resistance units. Kind of like, what are they competing against? Basar, right? And all strippers kind of have to stand up to Basar. He's, a, he's the golden standard for strippers, right? Whenever you think, should I put the stripper? The first thing you have to ask is Basar better, right? And most of the times the answer, yes, Basar is better than them. So he is the golden standard for strippers. He is incredibly good. This ignore FRS really pushed him over the edge. And the fact that he could put unable to be buffed made it so tank teams did not have a prayer against him because they would not be able to set up buffs, particularly at the time when DN was really popular and had very few counters. So Basar, incredibly powerful, was actually a buffed unit, right? Buffs usually bring a, a lot of really powerful units. Then we have a unit number three. We have a unit that you also may not know got buffed. Uh, some of these are kind of oldies, and that's how impactful their buffs were. But Spectre Tenebria, man, the amount of times that this unit has gone through reworks and changes and buffs is too much to count, right? But we are, I believe, on the fourth set of buffs. Yeah, it's the fourth set of buffs. We are at the fourth set of buffs for Swift and Tenebria. That's how often she was buffed. How was she before? Well, her S1 initially hit two units, right? It always hit two units, but the chance to poison was way lower, 
right? Her damage wasn't crazy. She also did always have this soul rune. But the damage was honestly a little mediocre, right? The damage was, was like, whatever, right? It was like very low damage. She used to not be stealthed. She did have this passive, but she used to have no stealth, right? And the S3, I believe, may have done less damage as well. And may have been AoE. This one I'm not too sure about. I think it was always single target, but it did less damage. And I don't think it pushed back. I think it was just all damage, right? I don't remember the exact of when she was first released. That's how long ago it was. It was like the like within the first four months, she was buffed, right? And she's one of the first units to get buffed. But again, nothing, right? Then the next update, they gave her stealth, but they made they made this skill instead of hitting two targets, only hit one and increase the damage of it. Right, so they increased the damage of this S1, but made it only hit one target, but gave her the stealth. They found out she's kind of niche, right? Doesn't really do much. And she could still get counterattack, by the way. So Emma Ken could still kill her, right? This skill was not there before. And then they did the last buff where they changed this back to two hits, to what you see now, right? Hitting two units. They added the cannot be countered. They added the... Um, they added that thing, right? That cannot be countered and hit two targets again. And they gave her extra chance to poison because the poison chance was a lot lower, right? So it was only 35% max, right? Or 50% max. And now it's like, what? 70% max? So like it, by a 20, 25% increase? I don't know the specifics, but just know, no stealth, barely any poisons, barely any damage. She used to do no damage. She used to do nothing. The S3 did a, a ton of damage if they had a ton of debuffs. I think that that's what it was. So... Man, it was just, it was not even the same unit, right? It was just legit not even the same unit. And she was my first ML, right? So I actually used to use her a couple of times and I was like, man, this unit kind of sucks. Uh, but over time, it became one of those units that I was really happy that she was my first ML. So Stenna, incredibly strong unit. But now we are at number two and we have none other than Landy. And Landy is a little bit weird, also kind of cheats a little bit. But I put her this high up because her buff was so impactful and because she's such a relevant unit in this meta. Landy was a unit that got buffed probably the one of the fastest from release. The fastest was probably Tamarine because she got hotfix buffed. But for Landy, Landy was a unit that when she was first released, honestly didn't do a lot, right? She wasn't really breaking anything in the game and she really couldn't really do her job. This S1 used to not give her as much CR. Right? That was one of the things that it used to not do. And it didn't do as much damage. They actually had lower damage on this S1. The S2 still had the ramp up, but it was a 5 turn ramp up. And it was less ramp up. It was like 10% or 5% per stack. Right? Something really small. And it was more stacks. Now they made it so it's only 3 stacks. And it's 15%. So you ramp up faster and you ramp up higher. Right? So that was really cool. You get more ramp up. And they still had the reset fighting spirit. And then there was the S3, where it used to not grant an extra turn, and it used to just do extra damage. The other thing is that the speed buff was only for herself, and it did not penetrate the target's defense when you did full fighting spirit. So again, all she did was damage. No support, no speed buff for everyone. Uh, the CR push was still there, but the CR push was only there when you had full stacks. Right? So no no support at all unless it was full stacks. And she was just getting shut out by barriers, right? She was just not doing her job. Well, on the same patch that they actually buffed her to see what she is now, where she gets speed buff, which is incredibly powerful in PvE and PvP. They added a penetrate defense on the S3. They gave her more damage on the S1. They gave her more CR push on the S1. They let her ramp up faster. On top of all that, they released Guiding Light. So kind of a pseudo buff. So that's how I consider her number two, because this unit is incredibly powerful now, and it's a staple in a lot of tank-breaking teams. I guarantee you, without Landy, we would still most likely be in a tank meta. 100%. Because there is no other unit that can break apart a tank team like Landy can. She just cycles and cycles and hits and speed buffs and pushes and damage. And it's just so much that it's usually too much for a tank team to deal with. And on top of that, the Guiding Light making it hard to kill. Incredibly powerful unit. She honestly, one of the reasons the meta is the way it is, is because of Landy. Because of everything she did, of how big her impact was. And last, 
but definitely not least. If you're always curious on who you don't know who number one is, you should know number one is always Arbiter Vildred. That's right, Arbiter Vildred. He was buffed. He used to be a nobody. Arbiter Vildred, who was that? He was considered one of the worst ML5 stars along with Spectre Tenebria. They, he was just garbage. So the S2 always had the revive. That was always there. This one damage was significantly lower, but it was always two targets. And the S3 was again significantly less damage that ramped up with debuffs. Which is one of the reasons he has hit, hit chance decrease. That's an old remnant of old old Arby, right? And there's other stuff that I just can't remember the exact of, but he did no damage. His revive didn't give her CR push. That's the other thing. The revive didn't give him CR push. It was just wherever he died, he just got the bar. He didn't get CR push. This was pretty big, right? Then they buffed him. And what the buff was, was they made him revive to 100%. Very new. They increased the damage of this skill like ridiculously, as well as the S1 just got raw damage increases. Like pretty big raw damage increases as well. And at the first, they also gave him attack buff when he revived. So he used to have a, almost a quote unquote built in gap. Imagine if Arbiter Vildred still had access to his artifact and was guaranteed attack buff when he revived. That was old Arby. They nerfed that. We're playing with a nerfed Arby. Let that sink in. All that you see is a buffed, then nerfed Arbiter Vildred. But the other the nerf that they did was that they took off that attack buff. But at the same time, Alexa's basket was buffed around the same time, which essentially made it so now you have the Arby of today. The unit that he is because of basket buff and people wanting to keep him as a semblance of what he used to be. And he's a unit that, just like his passive, refuses to die. So, with that, that is all I got for you guys today. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed this. I I know there's a lot of information I couldn't get as accurate as I wanted. There is no place that really has all the patches that we've seen. So, it's kind of hard to go back through all the buffs. But there has been a lot. So, if I missed one or I misspoke of one, please feel free to type in the comments. Um, I, I know I got it wrong. If it's something that's egregiously wrong, I will pin the comments. So, yeah, but I hope you all enjoyed and had a good time and realizing kind of the changes that everything brought. But that's all I got for you guys today, and I will see you next time. Peace.